this white stuff coming out of the sky? Done. <laughs> Done, we can go away. Should we go to Florida? Let's just get out of here. Let's go to Florida. Look at that, it snowed, guys. We're gonna take a little walk around the house before we hit the road. Spending about a month at our cabin for the holidays, we were definitely ready for some warmer weather and heading to Florida. Yeah, it takes us two days to get down to Florida, down to our friends in Dade City. Guys, I don't really feel good about this weather. But Chad drove around this morning and said the roads seem fine. The first snow at the cabin and we're leaving. We stopped in Tifton, Georgia at the KOA. We are dirty. I'm manually leveling. And by manually leveling, I don't mean getting out and cranking stuff with a hand crank or a drill. I'm talking about in the LCI One Control app. We're on the last 98 miles to get to Date City. To get to the Blue Beacon because oh, yeah. we are dirty. Filthy, all, the, all that. Salt. I think it's salt, right? It's probably the salt. Yeah. yeah. So we got to get that crap off of there. The truck is filthy. The new RV is filthy, and that is just—I mean—that's unacceptable. Brand new. Yeah. Brand new RV. So luckily, there's a blue beacon not too far. I don't think I've ever been so excited to go through a blue beacon. Usually, I'm like, <laughs> oh, uh, you know, yeah. it's, it adds on sometimes over an hour or more. Yeah. Depends on how long the line is. There's, there's a little bit of a line. It's been longer yeah. before. But it's worth the wait, and I got to work on uploading the, uh, the video yeah. for today anyway. Yeah, I did my part. I mean, what have you been doing? Oh. Just, just sitting here listening to my book. Just sitting there doing nothing. I'm just kidding, guys. He's got the most important job. I know this. And if you're taking your RV to Blue Beacon, be sure to tell them no brushes and no acid because the acid is not good for RV paint. It's fine on the truck. And brushes can scratch them. Yeah. It's a beautiful day at the beach. I was losing my mind for about a week until I could call you So we didn't do a whole lot while we were in Dade City other than go to the RV show. Get ready. Oh, we're doing video out there to get a picture. No. <laughs> I don't know how these cameras work. Yeah, we're getting ready to do this meetup thingy. Two hours and shaking babies and kissing yeah. people. Kissing people. <laughs> yeah, something like that. It's not that kind of meetup. This yeah. little bit That's is going downhill fast. <laughs> and we haven't even had the meetup yet. I can understand if we'd already had the meetup and we're slap happy, but no. in case we failed to mention, we are at the Florida RV Super Show in Tampa. Yeah, that and just work on projects around the RV. I finally got to put some peel and stick wallpaper in our little toilet room. So far, so good. Came up pretty face in it. Huh? Oh, you're pretty face. Yeah. This was definitely easier was with two people. I started doing it by myself and my arms weren't long enough. I don't know why you couldn't fit in here. Uh -uh. Oh, big man. Cause y'all big man. Yeah, it's looking good. I no, I think it's gonna make it look bigger. That's what she said. We also got our Florida paint guy to come out and fix that big old den I put in. <laughs> <laughs> Note to self, when you have a large section that is getting what, body work, is that what you call mm -hmm. it? The fumes really penetrate inside the RV and I was having a hard time and I couldn't stay inside the RV because it was very strong. Yeah, so just of, know that ahead of time. Lots of Bondo curing. 
after the RV show was done, we were excited to hit the road again for another two-day trek down to the Keys. And we decided to try out a new Harvest House location. It was a new live sanctuary church. It's basically just a church parking lot. Mm -hmm. But it's pretty cool because you can actually park over behind the church and get away from the road noise. Yeah. Our GPS did try to take us through some back roads so we didn't have to do a U-turn on Chrome. Which we did take the back roads, but in retrospect, we realized you definitely could have done that U-turn Yeah, on easily, no problem. Easy in and out of this place, however, we did hit a little bit of a branch, but the guy before us cleared out the big branch. With his RV. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, that was the only tricky part, so just know that if you decide to stay at New Life Sanctuary, that the trees at the entrance can be low hanging. Mm -hmm. Maybe not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> check it, check. Yeah. Well, long years and I know where I've been. I've been stuck up in a slurry wide from the sweat on my mind. Yeah, I'll definitely back up. I wonder if we want to go around the corner and park on that side. Now it looks like there's not as much space over there. You want me to go look? Yeah, I think we're, we're, we're fine here. There's nothing wrong with this, and we're kind of hitting behind the church, so that's fine. You probably need to pull up a little bit more, baby. That's good. There's a lot of parking space there. It's quiet. We parked behind the church, so it was hidden, and there's a large grassy area, which was great for dogs. There are also some peacocks roaming around. Ah! <laughs> we always try to buy something at a Harvest House. This didn't have that, but there was a donation thing online. There's a little mailbox, too, if you just had some cash that you wanted to leave them. It was a peaceful night's sleep, and we woke up in the morning and just got right back onto Chrome Avenue and headed to the Keys. No obstructions going out, by the way. Day two of our trip down to the Keys. We're both sick. They really jacked up this road. Can you hear it? It's like they've dug out the sections that they want to repave. But that's it, they just dug it out. They just dug it out. <laughs> and then here comes another one. Oh, another one, and another one. And yeah, another thank, one. thank you for those uneven pavement signs. I don't even know. <laughs> yep. This time in the Keys, guys, I don't know how much we're going to show you this time because, I mean, I give up. I don't even, shouldn't even be talking right now because the noises. Yeah, we'll do it later. So what we were trying to talk about in the truck, but the road noise was too much, <laughs> was that we've shared so much footage with you guys over the years of our travels down to the Keys in the winter, because as you know, we love going down there in the mm -hmm. winter, but it kind of limits us as far as what we can explore that's new and what we can share with you that's new. Which is why we're thinking of doing something different next winter. Mm -hmm. So if you have some suggestions of your favorite places to camp in the winter that's not in Florida, let us know in the comments down below. We might try something new. Yeah, maybe we'll do some actual winter camping. Somewhere wintry, where we can snowmobile. Yeah, something with some winter fun. I gotta go, there's this car here. Okay, I'm watching this uh, back end. It's the tail thing here. Hey Todd, hold up. Let this car go by because I'm, I'm keeping an eye on these branches right out here on the passenger side. I'm going to wave them on, okay? I I may need to trim some of these branches. If it went for my pride. I've been a little bit. See, fine. How's that side look? We've got just tiny little branches that are kind of dragging along the awning, but not a big deal. Cool. I'm out of the road now, right? Oh yeah, totally. I think we cleared all of it. We finally got to go to a place that we've been wanting to go for a while now, the Turtle Hospital. 
The Turtle Hospital is located at mile marker 48.5 on the Overseas Highway in Marathon. This actually used to be Hidden Harbor Motel, but it was purchased by Richie Moretti in the early 1980s. Today, the old motel houses office and staff for the Turtle Hospital. So we have been seeing this place many, many times as we've driven by it, coming to and from. Because it's right on US-1 if you can't hear. We're getting ready to go take a tour. They do them every about every half an hour. You can come and take a tour. And they survive by donation, so this mm -hmm. is a cool thing. Let's go check it out. The Turtle Hospital opened its doors in 1986 with four main goals to rehab injured sea turtles and release them back to their natural habitat. Also to educate the public and do research that aids sea turtles. They continue to work to pass legislation to protect the turtles and make it safer for them. Do you want to tell them the fun history about one of the buildings? Yeah, where they actually do the surgeries now on these sea turtles it used to be a strip club. Called Fannies. Mm -hmm. I think they took the pole out. <laughs> <laughs> Our tour guide, Marlisa, was really great. She had a great sense of humor. When I first moved here, it was still fannies. It was kind of decrepit looking and stuff. So the guy who owned this motel bought it and made it part of his place. The tour starts out with a short video presentation where she explains a little bit about the history of the Turtle Hospital and the different types of turtles that we were about to see. It, was, it was really cool. More different kinds than I thought. Well, there's seven. Yeah, I thought there was like two. <laughs> we have a couple of rules. The first one is don't put your hands in the water. The reasons for that are that we really don't know what's on our hands. And we've got sick animals and injured animals and we don't want to make it any harder for them to get better by introducing stuff to the water, right? If you do drop something in the water, don't be embarrassed. You gotta tell me right away because turtles eat everything. But you'll see here in a minute, they eat everything and they don't think about it. They just suck it up and there it is. <laughs> in the whole world, there are seven species of sea turtle. This, nothing like the land turtles. They can't squish themselves up. They have, can only uh, swim, and then they stick their heads under rocks, which is an interesting phenomenon, and you may be able to get to see that too. We have five species here. Green turtles, the most common turtle here. And these guys eat so much of this green turtle grass that the tissue inside turns green, and that's how they got their name. This is a loggerhead, and he has this jaw that gives him a 500 pound bite. Okay, don't put your hands in the water. It's a really good idea. What he does with that is he eats snails. He really likes snails. This is the snail that is the symbol of the Florida Keys. It's called the Queen Conk. And he just bites these parts off. This is solid. This is like an inch and a half of solid bone. And he just whoop, bites it off and eats the animal inside. So they've got a neck that goes from where their ears are down in the middle of their shoulder. They're just very rough looking. And this is a Kemp's Ridley. That's the rarest turtle in the world we have right now. Six, we might have seven left. This is one animal on its way to extinction and it's not our fault. How do you like that? This is a hawk's bill. And this poor hawk's bill, he got named by someone who'd never seen a hawk. A hawk's bill turtle, um, they pretty much eat what other turtles do. However, the big difference is that they eat a lot of sponges. The thing about these sponges is they contain a lot of silica. Silica is like that far away from glass in its makeup. So these guys eat that and it gets all infused in their tissues and they're inedible. But it gives them this beautiful, beautiful shell. Then the last one is the leatherback. This is a casting of a leatherback shell. This is a, a juvenile. The next picture is going to show you the inside of a leatherback's mouth. See all of these here? Those are called papillae. Papillae are made out of the same thing that your, your hair is made out of, keratin. And they're not hard, they're uh, kind of flexible. That's a young turtle's mouth. If you get an older leatherback, those papillae go all the way down their throat. After the presentation, Marlisa took us through the Surgery and Rehabilitation Center. More than half of that equipment was from donations from different hospitals and different organizations, which is really great. And this place survives really only by donations yeah. and by the money that they make through these tours that they give. So we want to help spread the word because we really like what they do there. They don't just hold them in captivity. They only hold yeah. them if their lives are in danger, if they were released back to the wild. Yeah, that's their whole point 
point is to mm -hmm. get them back out, get rehabilitation, right? Yeah, yeah. So they perform surgeries and rehabilitation and all that stuff. And if they are able to, they release them back into the ocean, which yeah, I a, love. That's a big event. I wish we could have seen one. But if you are interested, they always post the dates on their website for when uh, the next release is going to be. We learned a lot about how turtles can be affected by viral infections that come from the water. And you can actually see several of the turtles with a lot of tumor-like lesions that their team there actually removes surgically. They actually see a lot of turtles come in with propeller damage. This fellow here, Sonny, oh. he was hit by a boat and you can see the strikes are even. The way the propellers are made, they kind of face different directions. So as it came across him, that's how it got, got it. He's not doing all that well right now. They're having trouble getting him to eat. And what I didn't know was that when a propeller strikes a turtle, the vortices of air around the propeller get trapped in the shell mm -hmm. and create this like bubble under their shell, which affects their buoyancy. Right. So you'll see the turtles, if the injured area is in the back, like mm -hmm. they're kind of bubble butt, right? Floating like this. Yeah, they're but, trying to offset it with weights. Yeah. So you'll see these funny looking round patches on the <laughs> turtles and those are weights to help keep them down so that they can swim like they're supposed to. I wonder what they attach those weights with, like some JB Weld or, don't know. Duct tape. <laughs> Another problem that they see a lot of is turtles getting trapped and caught up in different types of lines from fishing boaters, lines, fishing yeah. lines, you name it. And they get caught up and they'll lose limbs or... Sometimes they get wrapped up and, and then they grow into it and it mm -hmm. restricts their growth in one area. Well, Sally was um, caught in a line on her left rear flipper, and it was degraded in all the flesh on her leg. So all that was left was the muscle. These turtles will eat anything, which means that they will eat debris in the water and construction <laughs> materials mm -hmm. and plastics and all of that stuff. And so the team there does a lot of extractions, and it's amazing what they find in the bellies of these turtles. It's really cool what they're doing. Mm -hmm. The turtle walked in with a covered tank. He had a six hour surgery getting a um, um, hip replacement. <laughs> <laughs> no, he had an infection. Golly, hip replacement. One of my favorite parts was we got to feed them. That mm. was fun. They didn't care though, they're just, they're used to it. They come up to you without food because they're so used to people feeding them, so. Mm -hmm. But it was fun. You, you wanna try it? You, should eat one just you to wanna say taste it? it? <laughs> you are holding me up above the water. I see you. I see And we got to see the little babies, the little hatchlings. Oh, yeah. Some of them were like that big. Yeah, super tiny. Yeah, yeah. It was just a great experience for us. A place that we've never been, even though we've driven by it so many times. But it's a really cool place. Drop by, take a tour, and show your support. Normally we like to hang around Tampa after the show for a few weeks and see family and friends, but this time we bolted straight down to the Keys. Yes, and there was a special reason for that. That's mm -hmm. because my good friend Kelly, you actually saw Kelly in one of our fairly recent videos in Cleveland. She was going down there with a group of her friends to celebrate her birthday, and I of course needed to be there for that. Yeah, I mean, we're gonna be there, she's there, we, we just gotta celebrate. With yeah. One of the days they were going to the Dry Tortugas, they were taking the ferry out there. If you've never been to the Dry Tortugas, we highly recommend it. Absolutely. We took the seaplane there a couple of years ago. One of my favorite memories of all time. So mm -hmm. go check it out. If you missed that video, you should go back and watch it. It we'll was amazing. Link. We'll link yeah. below. But they were spending the day and they were coming back in the evening on the ferry. And so I wanted to surprise her because she didn't think that she was going to see me for a couple of days. Great parking job. <laughs> he did good. Look at that. Good deal with the briefing. Well, yeah, look at this. <laughs> but we fit. We don't stick out any more than that other truck. My friend is on that boat right there. She doesn't know that we are here waiting for her. So this ought to be a surprise. 
And I know my friend well enough that once she sees me, she's probably going to get excited. <laughs> she might. She might fall down. <laughs> she's been known to fall down. So we'll see very soon, because there it is. There she is. You want me wait? <laughs> After surprising her at the pier, we walked with her group down to Mallory Square where there's always kinds of fun activities going on at sunset. Yeah, and although the sunset itself was sort of blocked by the clouds on the horizon, it was still beautiful, and there's always a celebration about the sunset, no matter what. It's always so much fun to be able to meet up with friends and family along our travels, and our time with her was not over. Coming up in our next video, she is going to be our first overnight guest in this new 410, which mm -hmm. was so much fun. And we do a couple of new things that we've never shared with you before, and we meet up with some friends. That's right, some friends you probably know.